Hi, everybody. Welcome to the kickoff of the 2022 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship. This is the pre-Anaheim 1 press conference. Uh, a couple of things I want to go over before we get to the riders. Um, this is the 49th season of Supercross, and Angel Stadium here in Anaheim has hosted 30 opening rounds uh, in this history of the sport. So this will be the 31st one uh, for the premier class, that is, 30 uh, 30 so far, 31 after this weekend. And again, 49th season of Supercross. It's going to be a fun one. Um, I'd like to welcome the returning partners and sponsors for Monster Energy Supercross for the 2022 season. Uh, I'll go through the list of, of our partners, Alpine Stars, Dunlop, Fly Racing, Gas Gas, GoPro, Honda, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, KTM, Mike's Harder, Milestone, Oakley, Rocky Mountain ATV MC, Spin Master, Stasic, Suzuki, United States Air Force, the Utah Sports Commission, Western Power Sports, Yamaha, and of course our title partner and title sponsor, Monster Energy. Thank you guys so much. Uh, greatly appreciate the partnership and look forward to a great 2022 season. Uh, I'd like to announce that Falcon Tires will be part of Supercross in the 2022 season and beyond um, and they'll be out in the fan fest throughout the season doing activation so if you're coming to a race head over to falcon tire check out everything they have going on and welcome to falcon tire for the 2022 season some information about anaheim uh, a1 of course is this saturday the fan fest will open at 12 o'clock for everybody wanting to come out and watch qualifying and see the riders and see the pits uh, fan fest 12 o'clock Opening ceremonies will start at 6.30. Race action will start right after at 7 o'clock. And this opening round will be live on CNBC and Peacock Premium. Uh, we'll also be on NBC and USA throughout the season, but the opening round is on CNBC and Peacock. Uh, the broadcast team from 2021 is back. Uh, I'll be working with Lee Diffie, Todd Harris, Ricky Carmichael, and Will Christian. So the same team from the 2021 season will be back with you for the 2022 season. Uh, a few other things I'll point out at the end of this press conference, but let's get to the riders and the stars of Supercross who will be on the gate on Saturday night. Uh, I'm going to start with three former champions. Uh, Cooper Webb, he won the 2019 and 2021 Supercross championship. Uh, Eli Tomac won the 2020 title. Jason Anderson of course, won the 2018 Supercross Championships. So we'll start with you three, Coop. I'll start with you. Um, big off season, lots of changes, new motorcycle, new training, um, just kind of a whole new format for you. A, a, a real simple question. What's been the biggest change for you um, as far as the mood? Like what, what's, how's it been over the last couple of months? What's the biggest thing that you've noticed that feels different than years past? I think the biggest thing is a motorcycle, you know, obviously our, our motorcycle is brand new and uh, it's, it's been a great bike to get to learn and ride and test. So it's been the biggest thing, like you said, obviously the program's a lot different and uh, quite different than what I've done the last three years. And then uh, overall the vibes have been good. A uh, new teammate with AP and then having Marv back on board. It's, it's been fun this off season so far. So yeah, I'd say the biggest thing is the bike feeling good. Um, We'll see where it all leads us here this Saturday. But uh, overall, it's been a great off season, and really looking forward to get things going. Uh, Coop, when there's a new bike, there's obviously challenges figuring things out, especially in the early going. Um, How has the motorcycle been for you? Do you feel like this is uh, closer to a perfect match as far as man and machine? Do you feel more comfortable on it um, initially and now that we're closer to the first round? Yeah, I do. I feel a lot better on it this year. Uh, it's like I said, it's, it's all brand new. So everything from last year's bike, we couldn't use. So it's definitely a challenge and definitely a little overwhelming at first, but we, we really did well this year with, with getting settings dialed in the team worked really hard. Um, I can't complain, man. I haven't touched a clicker since I think early November. So I'm excited and, uh, it just seems to fit me. It lets me ride it the way I want to ride it a bit more and um, can't, can't complain about anything so far. So um, I'm stoked on it. Awesome. Hope to see you Saturday night. Um, Eli, same question, a uh, little bit different situation. You actually switched teams, um, spent some time in Florida working with a, a new group of people. 
Same thing, Noah. What's been the biggest thing that stood out for you as far as the difference in your preseason prep compared to maybe a year ago or even over the last five years? It's everything. I mean, it's it's change it change of uh, scenery, change of the color of my front fender, everything. I mean, motorcycle, um, this point of view while riding. Uh, we've been everywhere. We've been in Florida. Uh, I s- initially started in Colorado. Um, now we're in California. So been bouncing around. It's been really fun. I've uh, been riding with, with guys, you know, with, with a group of guys um, most of that, most of that time. Uh, so it's, it's just been a nice change uh, before I, I think I may have isolated myself a little bit, uh, you know, too much, or, or maybe it's just maybe because I'm doing something different now, it feels better, but it's just refreshing that way. Um, and it's, it's good. I mean, it's good. Like my focus was, Hey, get this thing dialed in and then come in healthy. So uh, we, we've done all those things. And, you know, like I say, every year, just looking forward to it. Your program always, always has been Colorado, some time in California, but is Florida, is this, is this brand new? Have you spent any time in Florida in the past years, or is this the first time uh, doing some preseason prep in Florida? Yeah, it's, it's new. And it's just, it's just like getting on, on more tracks. Uh, I felt like was important uh, getting on different surfaces, more tracks, different, different designs, different fields. So um, and obviously they, you know, star racing has moved their whole base there. So, uh, that's, that's where we did a, a lot of testing and, and some good riding. So, um, yeah, that, that was new for us. Awesome. Hope to see you Saturday. Uh, Jason, uh, half of the question is, is the same as the other two guys, new motorcycle, new team, new group of people to, to, uh, to, to work with and get along with, um, as far as your training program, has there been any changes on that side of things or has that all been the same? And. And just kind of walk me through the last month or so and how it's been working with the new team. Yeah, so uh, I've been just in California with the team. You know, Cowie's based out here, so I moved closer to the shop. And then um, I basically just ride the test track and stuff like that. But I've been re- trying to ride as much as I can, you know, with with uh, AC and then um, even the Pro Circuit Boys. But for me, I've been trying to ride a lot of more like, uh, like public tracks and stuff. In California right now, they seem to be pretty good. And then... Um, as far as like training and everything, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, my long, uh, buddy, uh, Brock Tickle, he's been helping me out and, um, yeah, I seem to feel like we have a good thing going and, and, uh, but you never really know until you line up for the race, you know? So, um, um, I feel good, you know, at our track and stuff like that, but, uh, ready to get it going to see if we could, uh, see if we made any progress. Jason, sometimes when there's a change in motorcycle, it's not too dramatic, but for you with the frame, um, and just the personnel and the way things are ran, I, how was that transition early on, just switching from the Husqvarna team over to Factory Cali? Yeah, you know, for me, I was off the whole summer just with injury. And uh, so I didn't ride for, I don't know, like three months or so. So just getting back on the bike, riding the motorcycle was kind of weird to me at first. Um, and then obviously switching from the steel frame. Um, I've been on that thing since 2000, end of 2013. And um, so that's a long time on that frame. You know, I feel like, or a steel frame. Um, and, you know, riding this thing, it took me, it took me a little bit to get used to it, um, power, everything, but, uh, I feel like right now we're in a good spot and we've been making progress and stuff like that. And I'm excited, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, um, just see where I stand and, and put in a good effort and just try and progress every weekend. So, uh, it was different. And then even the personnel and everyone on the team, they're all cool as can be. So I've been enjoying myself and, um, ready to get, get this thing going. See you Saturday. Uh, Jason Wygant, Racer X, why don't you kick it off for us? Yeah, I'll go to Eli Tomac for this one. The riding different tracks, um, and does that mean also riding with the other riders on the team? You've obviously got a pretty capable teammate there with Dylan Ferrandez. Have you been riding with him? And is that a little different also than maybe the way you've done it in the past? Yeah, it's just different. Like, you know, I've I've always been just to like with, with two guys on the track, you know, and we've had like six to eight guys on the track. So, uh, that's what's different. Yeah, we've all ridden together. Um, there are kind of like two groups at the farm, but at uh, at our season when we're down there. But uh, for the most part, we're all on the track at the same time. So, yeah, that's that's new. Uh, Michael Antonovich, Swap Motor Live. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. This will be for Cooper Webb. Cooper, you're a two-time champion now. Does it feel different than the first time did? We know that guys, after they win the first championship, it's sometimes hard for them to find the motivation again. Uh, you had a one-year break between your two titles. Does this one feel different going into it? And how do you feel you've been respected in the preseason hype? 
Yeah, it does. It does have a different feel, no doubt. I mean, obviously, last year's season was incredible, and I, I think a lot of change this year. So I think there's there's a lot of motivation to to go out and and try to show uh, that that change is has been good. So uh, definitely motivation there, but also just to to try to go and defend. Uh, I mean, I've didn't do it obviously the, the first time. So I think uh, this time around, I, I just feel more experienced. Uh, I feel better. I feel, you know, as I get older, I feel st- like I'm getting stronger and, and physically uh, fitter. And so, yeah, I just feel like I'm in a good spot. I think the motorcycle is for me a, a step in the right direction. I uh, still did everything that the old bike does, but improved in a lot of other places that I felt like we struggled with before. So for me, just being able to ride a dirt bike that you just feel so comfortable on. And um, I've ridden quite a bit different tracks and with different guys and all over and stuff. So feel good everywhere I've been and, and with guys I've ridden with. So it's just um, a good off season overall. I've been healthy and uh, yeah, it's time. It's crazy. It's, it's flown by the off season, but it's exciting to go racing. Uh, David Iser. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, David Iser, DMX Touch Radio. Jason Anderson, this one's for you. Happy New Year, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Hey, uh, you're a free spirit. And in the media, we appreciate that. I promise you that something outside the ordinary. But unfortunately, this persistent narrative that you don't work as hard as your competition continues to follow you. It's a new year. It's a new team. Can you set the record straight? Reality versus perception with this with this narrative. Uh, I guess the results will have to speak for themselves, right? But um, yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, to be at a top level like we are, you have to work hard somewhat, you know. Um, but for me, I feel like uh, you know, sometimes I like to work hard and maybe play harder, but it is what it is, and I enjoy myself and we just keep it going, keep it rolling. All right, thanks, man. Yep. Uh, one more for this group, Revista Moto. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, uh, Cooper Webb, you are uh, at your peak. It looks like you're at your peak performance uh, for the, coming into the 2022 season. I'm just curious, can you talk a little bit, a bit about how it feels to ride with the likes of Eli Tomac and Ken Roxon and to share the racetrack with the, those equally uh, talented riders? Yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. I mean, like you said, I feel like I'm in a, in a good position. You know, I just turned 26 and... Uh, feel like yeah physically I'm, I'm in a really good spot and uh experience and racing and all that stuff is, uh, it's a good place to be and yeah definitely uh exciting and cool to race those guys and there's you know 1500 guys out there that are, are top level athletes as well but it has been cool especially these these last few years um you know I think I read a stat the other day that we were 84 percent of uh the last three years I think winners and stuff so Definitely um, us three have seemed to be top three in the series the last few years, but there's always guys coming in and there's always plenty of guys that can go win. So you can't ever underestimate anybody. And uh, in our 450 class, it's it's just getting gnarlier and gnarlier and gnarlier. And bikes evolve, teams evolve. Everyone is on winning equipment now and, and doing the same programs and doing everything at top level. So uh, it's definitely – cool place to be in you know when you when you win or, or do well you're at the top of the sport no doubt so I think yeah we're, we're racing the, the best in the world and I'm excited to be able to do it for another year thank you uh, thanks Cooper thanks Eli thanks Jason and uh, we'll see you guys on Friday for press day yep uh, the next group is former opening round winners um, and the most recent Justin Barsha uh, won the opener in 2021 2020 and 2019 going on three years in a row. Uh, Ken Roxon has won the opening round 2014, 2015, 2017, and Marvin Muskan winning in 2018. And of course, Jason Anderson uh, also won it in 2016, but spoke to him. So uh, start with you, uh, Justin Barsha. Uh, Jeremy McGrath is the winningest rider um, in history at the opening round. He's won five of them, but he did three straight. Uh, you've now won three straight, and if you win on Saturday, you would break his record for the most consecutive opening round wins in Supercross history. I have to imagine the focus is on the championship, but with a record like that uh, sitting there, is it is it is it tempting to go out and get that thing and try to take a a, a cool record away from Jeremy McGrath? 
Uh, I'd love to take it from Jeremy McGrath and make, <laughs> make me feel really good. Uh, but obviously, like you said, that's not the main focus, but I love winning races. So why, why not, why not go win the first race? Sounds good. Uh, and then off season for you, just coming in, um, same team, same bike, not a lot of changes. We just heard from the, uh, the former champs. They all had huge changes. You not much at all. Just the addition of Will Hahn to the program. Um, is that relieving a little bit to come into a season where there hasn't been much change and you can just build off of what you did a year ago? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. It feels great to be on the team. They've been doing an awesome job. Got a new mechanic, um, got a new uh, crew chief. So everything's going really good. Will's done a phenomenal job. I, this year was like the first year I really trained with two guys, uh, Michael and Pierce. So that's, that's been really cool. It's brought like some good memories back from my, er, uh, my early 250 days. Um, and obviously those two are really keeping me on my feet because they're really fast. Um, they both are really good at, at certain things. So it's been super enjoyable off season. I've had a lot of fun. Um, that's kind of the word <laughs> has been fun, 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 fun. Um, and our team's fun. So, um, I'm just going to try to keep that rolling, have a good time. Um, and see what the season brings. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely been enjoyable. Forward to it. Um, let's open it up to the media for this group. Again, Justin Barsha, Ken Roxon, and Marvin Muskan. Uh, Steve Mathis, I'll start with you. Questions for Kenny. Um, Kenny, what's up? Uh, way, to, way to present yourself. Uh, a really nice dude again. Like the look. Um, so, all right, Kenny, we all waiting for you to get this thing done. Uh, you've won a lot of races. What has changed in your program? What do you think about um, the long run and uh, staying in there each and every week? Has there been some changes you've made? Um, <clears throat> yes and no. You know, I actually ended up going to Europe this year uh, to catch up with some family. More of a business trip rather than just pleasure, but it fit in there. So um, I went and actually caught up with the guys together with Blake Savage, which is my trainer. Uh, went over to the APC training facility, which is the Red Bull, uh, which are the Red Bull guys in Austria. And that was awesome. Obviously, I have a history with them back in the GPs. That's where I always used to go to three times a year and, and did a bunch of my training and tests and stuff. So uh, we had some great fun there. And they have just upped it a whole nother level to uh, when it comes to the performance side of thing and really have a specialist in, in every category. So I really, really enjoyed going back there. And for us, it was basically just going back to the basics. So on the training side of things, I was super covered and uh, um, schedule wise. And, and we looked at it a little bit more. Me and Blake looked at it as a, like a collab a little bit. So a couple of changes going on there, which was all great. And then um, I uh, as well went and saw a doctor over there to try and get some more things figured out. And that did really, really, really well. And everything was going to plan on, uh, you know, until kind of like mid December, beginning of December, I came down with a gnarly sickness for some reason and uh, um, kind of still battling the, uh, the effects a little bit. It wasn't COVID, but still battling the effects a little bit, which kind of threw a wrench in our program for, for this December. Um, that was a bit of a struggle, but at the same time, I honestly kind of revived myself a little bit um, after this year. Obviously I had a really good year in 2021 and I just, you know, really made the sport my hobby again and, and training and everything. So it just felt really good to go back to just having fun and, um, um, you know, spending a lot of time at the track and trying to work on my craft a little bit. Uh, dark side. All right. Uh, Justin Barsha. So what, what has changed in your uh, program that you think it will help you improve where are you at this year? Has anything changed? Are you sticking with the same program as 21? Um, yeah, for sure. I would say I, I don't feel like a lot has changed, but I do feel like riding with Michael and Pierce has been huge for me. Um, it, it, it's kept the pressure on all season. You know, I've been battling, um, you know, I don't know if they'll say it, but I feel like they've taught me things and I've, I've taught them things. So that's been, Super fun. Um, having Will um, has been really cool. He's a fun guy to be around. We were teammates back in the day, so we go way back. We've always been good friends, um, and we always got along well. So to have him doing the training program and stuff is really cool because he has ideas. Um, I've trained with a lot of different people. I've trained myself, so we've collabed on that. Um, so there's definitely a few things different, but all in all, um, it's been, it's been really fun, just uh, comfortable with the team. I'm super stoked to be with them. I renewed my contract, so that's awesome. 
And yeah, just looking forward to racing and going out there and doing the best I can do. And usually when I do my best, I'm having a lot of fun and going for it. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things going on. Nothing too crazy different, but um, that's a, that's a good thing in my opinion. Awesome to hear, man. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Brad Gephardt. Thank you, Daniel. Brad Gephardt, Big MX Radio. This question is for Ken Roxon. Ken, you have a lot of continuity in your current program coming in from last year. How do you compare that to years where you were dealing with a brand new motorcycle? And, and how do you tackle uh, basically making those adjustments in an off season to make some gains year over year? Yeah, I mean, I feel like whether you've been on a cycle, uh, on a motorcycle for a long time or not, it seems like we always want to try and get better, right? Like I've I've had my problems last year as well with the motorcycle that I wasn't too stoked on. And um, you try and work on it again, you know, and it's really never, never perfect, but it's about making it work and getting it consistent and on every part of the track. So um, same thing with this year. And overall though, um, the testing side of things just takes up so much time, right? Because you can't only just be testing. And then, you know, before you know it, the, the off season is over and you haven't done any laps. So you got to just try and find the, uh, a happy medium, you know, that doesn't always mean uh, that we are getting better and better. And all of a sudden everything's great, but we always every day try and, and better ourselves. And you got to explore um, other directions that what you knew uh, than what you usually go in hopes to find something that, that cures the issue from the year before. So we are on the same motorcycle and we have learned a ton this off season and kind of taken some things off the table that, really didn't apply or didn't really make us any better. And, and we applied some other things that, um, you know, potentially will make the motorcycle and us better. So um, I guess that's the, it's a fun thing about testing, right? There's a lot of moving parts on the motorcycle and it's kind of fun picking those things out, but sometimes we're in a little bit of a time crunch. And I think that goes for everybody really. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, last one for this group, Jason Wygant. Yeah, this will be for uh, Marvin Muscan. Uh, there's been off seasons where you've won every race and you were a contender the year before and you came in with all the pressure of you're one of the guys that everyone knows could win the title. What's the difference now? It was a solid season last year, but I think you were ninth in points. Is it actually better in a way to come in, uh, not knowing exactly where the expectations are, where normally you'd be going in Anaheim one and people were expecting you to either win and if you didn't, it'd be a disappointment? Uh, yeah, that year in 2018, that, that was when the... I did straight rhythm and Paris Supercross Geneva and, and win it all. So I, I came in into the season and everybody was, uh, yeah, expecting me to do well. And, and which I did because, I, yeah, I won the opener. So that was amazing. But, uh, yeah, this year is a lot different. Um, my program is, uh, was completely different. I decided to stay here in California and have GV uh, with me at the practice track. And uh, I, try, I, I tried that in the past, but in 2019 to have him with me, but it didn't really fit uh, my, the, the program, you know, with Alvin. So this year was a lot different and uh, I really wanted to, to work with him, especially out on the track. And I knew it was going to be uh, uh, different and, and, and fun because it's, we, like he made me do like different tracks on, on the actual track, you know what I'm saying? Like, like different rhythm sections and working on the whoops and stuff. So uh, that's exactly what I wanted, and uh, and it worked out great. So I'm excited about it. Um, but definitely, the expectations are yeah. It's I, I have I have no idea. Obviously, I want to do good, but there's so many good guys, and 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 I, I like it like this. I, there's actually uh, uh, no pressure, and um, but I'm just glad to be here, uh, be here, and then go for another year. Uh, you know, with Red Bull KTM, and uh, we'll see how it goes Saturday. But it's definitely definitely a, a new a new program that brings, uh, that brings, you know, motivation and, and more, more fun and more, uh, you know, more free, you know, going into the, the, the championship. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Marvin. See you on Saturday. See ya. Uh, the next group, uh, Chase Sexton, Adam Cincerulo, Aaron Plessinger, Dylan Ferrandis, Malcolm Stewart, Dean Wilson, Joey Savacci, and Justin Bogle. Um, I'll start it off with a question for Adam. Adam, you made the announcement this week on Instagram that uh, you're banged up, but you're gonna give it a go. Uh, what's the approach like now for the opening round? Are we, are we just getting into the season, gonna spin laps and see how it goes? Is there, is there still a, a, is there enough there for you to push for a win? I just, what's the approach coming into this first round and maybe the first month of the season? That's a good question. I mean, I think uh, my approach is always do what I can, do my best. 
uh, I'm kind of taking it day by day. I, I just got on a supercross track on Monday. Uh, it's the first time I've hit any jumps or anything since I, I had the crash. So yeah, going to be one of those things where I get in there, I see what I can do. Uh, I think I don't need to, you know, go too crazy. Um, you know, I had, I got to take what the shoulder can give me obviously, but I think it could be a positive mindset for me too. You know, I think, um, coming in and just getting my feet wet, getting in there and, uh, you know, I feel pretty confident in my starts and, and I think, you know, being up there with the guys will, will kind of progress me along and yeah, just, um, do what I can. Uh, Jonathan McCready. Jonathan McCready, getdrop.com. Question for Dylan Ferrandez. Dylan, you're riding that Ricky Carmichael's old practice track, essentially. How exciting was that for you? I'm sure you followed him whenever you were, you were in France. And also to ride with Eli Tomac, a champion of Supercross. Is that helping you get a good reference point for where your speed and intensity needs to be this season? Um, yeah, for sure. The, the place at the, at the farm uh, is, uh, is really amazing. Um, um, when I was a kid, I was watching video of her RC riding there. And uh, yeah, I mean, everybody have always, always dreamed to ride a, a place like this. And uh, yeah, since, since all the team moved over there, it was just a um, good day every day. The dirt is, is really good. Uh, the facility is, um, is on, on the side, so, so we have everything. And uh, yeah, we just had a really good winter. And uh, yeah, Eli was, uh, was there a few, few weeks. Uh, I really spent my, my full winter over there, but yeah, I just saw Eli like uh, maybe two or three weeks over there, and uh, we we trained a little bit together, so that so that was really good. He's uh, always like uh, an animal on the track and really fast and strong, and uh, so it was it was good to have him um, with us uh, and all the the two fifty riders at, uh, at Star Racing, and um, yeah, we had a great uh, great time and great 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 winter. Thank you, Michael Lindsay. Uh, Adam Cianciarello, uh, my question is for you. Um, you know, you just publicly announced the other day that you have faced an off-season injury, um, as you even commented in that uh, post that, you know, a lot of times it's not talked about. Um, how hard is it for you to basically get through this point, um, being that notoriously in your career, like a lot of guys' uh, injuries are stacked up. Um, how do you get past that moving into the season and make a positive of your, uh, your second year here in the 450 class? Uh, I mean, I think I have a pretty simple philosophy when it comes to that. Um, I do my best. I do my best mm -hmm. all the time, no matter what. And, and that's what I, that's what keeps me motivated and keeps me going, doing my best. It's not necessarily like I need to, um, be crushing it all the time. It's, it's, it's really important for myself personally to dedicate myself to something and be the best I can be. Um, and yeah, so it's just one foot in front of the other, you know, control what you can control. It happened. I had a crash. I was feeling great the whole off season. Um, and it's just something that just happened. And I, you know, I could sit and stress about it and be discouraged and hate my life. But um, ultimately I'm living the dream. I'm stoked. It's not worse. I'm stoked. I'm able to get out there and race and, uh, yeah, I think uh, I rely on the, you know, the amount of laps I got in on the off season. Uh, I feel like we did a really good job with the bike, um, with my program. So just, uh, I rely on that. And yeah, like I said, just always one foot in front of the other, do the best I can. Thank you. Uh, Mitch Kendra. Mitch Kendra from Racer X. My question is for Malcolm Stewart. So the new bike, the new team, everything like that, the new training program, how's that been so far? And then also, have you been able to go fishing? And what's your off-season been like away from the bike kind of as well? Oh, man, it's uh, definitely no fishing. Uh, it's, we, we've been pretty much grinding this whole time uh, since pretty much this entire off-season. And it's been a pretty big change for me, uh, jumping ship. I mean, definitely uh, going to albums and stuff like that and riding with a whole different group of guys has, has been great for me. And uh, for me, it's... Um, you know, the same mindset is going into the year is to uh, just go out there and do the best that I can. And, you know, the results will come. And I feel that I have a really good group of people that have supported me this year. And, man, I, honestly, all the talking is really just going to be at the races, to be honest. And uh, but, yeah, no, definitely no fishing on that side of things. Uh, we're going to put the poles away for a little bit and uh, focus on the racing and just have some fun this year. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Brian Converse. 
Yeah, Brian Converse Motocross Action Magazine. It's uh, questions for Aaron Plessinger. Aaron, how you doing, buddy? It's good to see you. So, you know, this is kind of a broken record again. You know, we got so many new riders, new squads, uh, new brands. Everybody's jumping around. You know, you on the KTM squad, you know, you got a pretty heavy uh, squad with you there. How do you feel? I mean, I know everybody's, you know, done all the other preliminary talks, you know, coming into the season at this point right now with, with just a few days into a one, how do you feel right now uh, where you are on the bike with the training and everything else? Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I feel pretty dang good <laughs> to say the least. Um, I have been, this one's ready. I mean, I, I kind of so... missed uh, the last week, right. uh, but, uh, um, missed the... but, but, as far as right now, one by Judge Francis good. that I would go to a six. Riding this week, leading it up. Six. Um, first, so I got there so at six. I'm feeling and ready, to, ready to get this gate. Then I asked down. you, and it said um, six thirty. I'm, I'm ready to get so I hauled, on the gate I with all these guys, the, and uh, I pulled I into the parking lot. Ready to close at six thirty. I don't know. I'm ready to show everybody what I got. And uh, just here, Miss Coco, you yeah, know, like I'm ready. One, yeah. Well, you look you look ready for our be ready for you. Thanks, Aaron. Whatever. I know how FedEx works. Like, yeah, like, they're still there. Thank you. They're still working. No one. No one. Not right, anymore. Guys, um, Go around the one, back. Up, and like yell through the gate, just trying we'll to holler for somebody. I finally see somebody walk in the building. So I run back around to the front, the glass doors. You guys want to just listen in on whatever's going on? Hey, Can Forrest, we... why don't you give us a mute real quick, buddy? <laughs> is that who it is? There we go. All right. I'm uh, a genius. Uh, Steve Mathis. Conversation, but a uh, question for Dino. Dean, did I see that you just turned 30? I don't, I'm mute there. Oh. Yeah, just turned 30, so it's pretty crazy that that's the uh, that's the 20s gone. So um, yeah, we are uh, we've made it to 30, still racing. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I yeah, a couple things you're super old now I didn't that's really depressing for me and you but honestly um you know you're still on the team um you're doing a good job you got the new bike scuba left you've got a a really unique uh look at this sport from a lot of different angles so I just as a veteran now uh talk about the off season for you and where you're at what you're thinking about and maybe a little bit on on scuba Steve leaving the team too yeah, I mean, for us to lose Scuba is a big upset. I mean, Scuba is, uh, you know, he's not only our, like, uh, you know, our team manager or whatever. He's, you know, he's a good friend as well. And he really looks after the writers. So to lose him is going to be a big loss to the team. But um, we got him for the first six races, so that will be good. Um, but, yeah, I totally didn't expect that to happen at all, you know, to see him go. But uh, as far as the off season, I feel like it went really well. I feel like I'm in a good spot. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone's kind of saying the same thing. Everyone's feeling good, you know, this and that. But uh, I, I like where I'm at mentally. I feel like I'm good. I feel like a lot of people don't really – I'm not really on anyone's radar or um, I'm just not really part of – like, you know, part of the talk, which is fine. I like – you know, I feel like I'm kind of low-key, which – I like it like that. So I feel like uh, we're in a good spot and um, I don't really have any pressure or anything. Um, I think we'll, we'll be fine. David um, What's it like being with, um, sorry, quick follow up. What's it like being with Alden Dean? Um, it's a program that you've been around before, but never as part of the main uh, group of guys with, with Malcolm and RJ. What's, what's it been like uh, having direct hands-on Alden Baker uh, working with you? Yeah, it's really good. So to be clear, like I'm not fully part of the, the with RJ and Malcolm, but I'm with Brownie, who's awesome as well. But the good thing that's changed this year is that we all write together. So me, Malcolm, Plessinger, um, RJ, Jalik, Styles, we all do our motos together. So the motos at the track have been really good and intense. And I feel like that's something that maybe I was missing was just having that someone that you know just that push so i think uh you know that set of things is really good and then i do all our gym stuff with brownie and we all cycle together so really all i do different is we do our gym with brownie so 
Um, it's been really good. We have a good group around us. Everyone's just, yeah, just doing their best. And we'll just uh, come into the season healthy and ready, ready to go. You were working with, so I blame Daniel. Thanks. David Iser. Thank you, Daniel. David Iser, DMXS Radio. Uh, Mr. Sex, and this one is for you. First of all, I think we all love your 2022 hair. Thank you for rocking an old retro style for us. Uh, on, the, on the intro show, Daniel Blair put a lot of pressure on you. He said you were as fast and as gritty as, as Cooper Webb and you're younger. Uh, with this much pressure, do you feel like with the older guys in the class that, that you are this guy, that this is going to be your step and contend for a championship this year already? I mean, yeah, I, I appreciate Daniel's kind words. I wouldn't really say it's a lot of pressure. Um, I appreciate what he says, and I feel like I have the potential to do big things in this sport, and uh, that's kind of been my dream since a, a little kid. So for me this year, I've had a really good offseason, like everybody said. Um, I've had a lot of fun switching up a little bit with my program, and, um, yeah, I just feel refreshed and a little bit more, I guess, calm coming into this year. Uh, last year, I felt like I was a little bit underprepared coming into the first race, and then I kind of it kind of snowballed. I had a few crashes and never really got – in front of the eight ball, I feel like I was always climbing back up and trying to get to a, a good spot. So this year, I feel like I gained fitness. Um, like I said, calm, more more mature, and hopefully a better version of what I was in uh, 2021. You know, Kenny touched on the second year of a new bike. Uh, how are you feeling this off season uh, coming into Anaheim as opposed to last? Yeah, it's just it's a lot easier, I guess I could say. When I was younger, I always looked forward to having a new platform. I think 2018 was my rookie year in Supercross when we had a new bike. And the 250, I feel like it's just a lot easier to set up than the 450 is. So I kind of got a fake sense to reality. And um, obviously, we had our struggles with that bike. And then finally, when I got off the 250, we were starting to really get to a spot we felt like we were competitive. And then now, last year, having a new bike and trying to learn the 450 on Supercross, is it's, it's difficult because – one, I'm trying to learn a bigger bike on a tight track. And then two, I'm trying to figure out what the bike needs and what I can get away with. So um, I think this year we've had just all the notes we took last year and put it into a setting this year has been really good. And Kenny and I are pretty close on settings. And that's kind of hard to believe because we were on toll two opposite ends of the spectrum um, last year. So we're pretty close. And now we can kind of share notes and lean off of one, uh, one another. And we have – also, the new 250 this year was with Hunter and Jet, which is pretty similar to our bike. So all four of us kind of putting our notes in, and um, I feel like we came up with a really good setting and overall just more comfortable than last year. So you're going to go ahead and say you're coming for Coop. You just go ahead and throw it out there. Just tell him that. I'm coming for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's just Cooper. I think there's, like he said, there's, I mean, there's probably 15 guys that could yeah. go and be on the podium. So. I think uh, it's going to be a competitive season, and it's something that I look forward to. It's not uh, just three guys racing each other. I think all of us have potential to win races and be on the podium. So that's what I'm excited for, and I think uh, it's going to be a good year for Supercross. Thanks, Chase. Thank you. Alex Gilbert. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, Alex Gilbert, MotoOnline.com. Uh, this one's for Joey Savachi. Uh, I think we're all aware of the, the potential that you have uh, – so how important for a rider like you is it to start the season strongly and, and get that early momentum? Uh, yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, I, I think I, I think the potential I have is there. And sometimes um, I think it's easy to get lost. And, you know, to be honest, last year was, uh, it was tough. Um, it was really good to be back racing. Um, but again you know when, when I go racing I want to be competitive and I want to have I want to have fun and um, you know between just mental blocks and just fighting demons and just a combination of things um, last year was was tough um, honestly it was probably one of the one of the toughest years I've had um, just trying to just to clear to clear everything and reset and um, as tough as it was um, you know, I think everything works out for a reason and just the whole vibe this year going into the off season has been, has been really good. Um, 
I feel mentally um, really good. Physically, I feel really good. And, and my head space, I just feel like I'm in, in a much better spot than I was last year. Um, so obviously momentum um, is going to be important early. Um, but I think at the end of the day, just like everyone else has kind of <clears throat> already talked about, um, there's going to be a lot of us that have speed um, and can be really fast. And it's just a matter of um, on the nights that you feel froggy, you know, make those nights count. And um, on the nights that you're struggling, um, you know, you really got to focus on the, on the key things and putting yourself in a good spot and, and just trying to minimize the damage. And um, I think if we can do that early on, build the momentum, um, I think we'll be in a good place. Awesome. Thank you. Look forward to seeing it. Uh, last one for this group, Michael Antonovich. Thanks. This one's for Justin Bogle. <laughs> Justin, you've raced Anaheim in the 450 class at pretty much every level. You've been a defending 250 Supercross champion. You've been a last minute fill-in guy. You've done it all. How does it feel to come into this year with the HEP team and the group that you have around you, the expectations that they've given you and the ability to just be yourself this year and know this is your chance to just do you? Super exciting, man. I'm, change is good for the soul sometimes, <laughs> you know? So uh, just come in with uh, really no expectation, man. It's Everyone's talking about, oh, that – a great off season. I've done this and that. I honestly really haven't. It's not like I've had an injury or anything, but uh, just we kind of got started late and I haven't got, you know, thousands of laps under my belt like most people probably do at this point. But with that being said, I'm feeling pretty good and uh, just really excited with the group I got, man. Like they're so excited to have me on the team and they're doing anything and everything they can do to make sure I'm as good as I can be. And it's a lot of fun, man. It's a really cool place to be for me at this point in my career to have that kind of support and uh, kind of renews the the love and reminds you of what you're doing this for and makes it exciting, man. I think trying to kind of build this thing together, you know, Suzuki, we've been a little behind the eight ball for the last couple of years, but <laughs> it's pretty fun to try to, uh, you know, make something out of this and, and learn and grow with the guys. Awesome, guys. Um, we'll see you all on Friday for press. Good to see you guys. Have a good week. Uh, we got two riders left. Um, paired them together for a reason. They're buddies, and they're one of them is the maybe the oldest rookie. Well, oldest rookie this year for sure, Alex Martin. And then there's uh, the vet, Justin Brayton. Um, put you guys together for this last round. And Amart, I'll start with you. I know the voice. You got some issues going on today, so uh, we'll just make it quick. Um, how's the transition been? We, you know, we've heard from you over the last month or so, but, uh, just now that we're a week away, uh, how do you feel? And then we'll let you go. Yeah. So I lost my voice, uh, yesterday. So this is probably going to be pretty short, Daniel, but, um, no, I, I really enjoyed the off season with the club max team, um, riding with Brayton and Garrett Marshbanks, um, a lot in the last two months. And it's been really fun. Um, having Garrett, you know, push me day in, day out, yeah, that young kid, you know, and uh, it's been really, really helpful. And um, like the other guys said, there's 15 to 20 um, legit dudes in this class. Um, I, you know, I, there's countless championships in this class, this 450 class. So um, I'm just grateful to be here. And I really, really just want to see what I'm capable of and, and what I can do in this 450 class. And, and like I said earlier in another interview, um, I'd you know, I think I'd regret it if I never tried the 450 before it was done. Um, so for me, it's all about just seeing what I'm capable of in this class. Thanks, Alex. Um, let's go with Brad Gephardt. Yeah, this question's for uh, Justin Brayton. Justin, uh, not exactly your first rodeo rolling into an Anaheim one, um, but definitely an off season different from years previous, uh, having, having some time off the bike. How do you battle that and still stay ready to uh, perform your best and how what's expected of you, not only by the team, but your own expectations as well? Yeah, for sure. It, it's been quite a bit different, obviously, with normally I, I race a lot, you know, and, and come Anaheim 1, I'm kind of mid-season form. And, um, but last year, that wasn't really the case either. And, and I came out and, you know, second round on the podium and leaving Houston, I was top five in points after the first three rounds. So. Uh, I don't really think it matters. Like you said, it's not my first rodeo. And um, that's the biggest thing is I just lean on my experience, you know, and, and it's kind of just another gate drop. I think that helps me a lot at the first few rounds is I think a lot of guys are dealing with nerves and, and their bike settings and stuff where I kind of can 
know what to expect from an Anaheim or the first few rounds with uh, the track builds and how the dirt is and, and typically what you expect out of the first few rounds and, and where you've done all your testing. Like I've done testing in California a lot previously and typically you're a little bit too soft at Anaheim and, and vice versa testing on the East coast. So um, just really lean on my, my knowledge and experience and, and um, try to get some good starts. That's the, that's the main thing. There's been however many guys on here uh, tonight that are all capable of, of doing really well. So um, you just got to execute the day and, and um, lean on my experience. At the ripe age of 46, can you still bust out the biggest jumps on the track? <laughs> Absolutely. That's uh, it's kind of funny though. Love it. The older I get, the more fun it is like to dissect the track. I've written so many layouts, right. And, and I can always kind of lean on other tracks or if there's a quad or something, and I'm like, Oh, that's like this jump three years ago at, at this place or whatever. So uh, it, it's fun to, to show up to a new track each and every weekend and, and try and figure it out. It's like putting together a puzzle. Perfect. Thanks, Justin. All the best this season. Cool. Daniel. Thank you. Michael Lindsay. Yeah, my question's for Justin Brain. Um, Justin, flashing back to last year, Dallas is probably not a night that you would like to remember. And I know the weeks leading up to it were difficult. There were some things out of your control and some frustrations. Um, to put it straightly, that was a gnarly night to watch. I know we were across from your guys' truck. And from hearing people in your camp, you know, there was those question marks if you were going to come back. And I'm sure anybody in this room who's rode and had a, had a big one, whether you're in the hospital, you're traveling home, you question your motivation, the reason for doing this, you yourself have a family. So that comes into play. Um, how hard was it to, to, to come back again? Cause like I said, heard, uh, um, call it, call it a day, but you're here for another hoorah. What was it harder to find the motivation to come back this time? And what ultimately has brought you back, um, for one more season? Yeah, great, great question. Um, to be completely honest, leaving Dallas, I, I was I was done. But I also know I've been through injuries enough in this in this sport that you can't really make rash decisions when you're in that spot. And the hard part was uh, to have so many things happen out of my control. And the things that I was doing that were in my control, I was doing at the highest level. Um, like I just mentioned, Houston. I mean, I think that was overlooked tremendously. That. Uh, I was 36 years old and, and come out at round two with a stack field and be on the podium and leave Houston top five in points. I don't think anybody would have guessed that. Um, and then, yeah, then things just started to go crazy. Honestly, it just had bike issue after bike issue. And, and it was out of a lot of people's control, to be honest. And um, so, yeah, I, I definitely had to work on myself, work on my mind. You know, crashes like that where the bike locks up in the air and you get spit right on your right on your head it's like you it's traumatic right like um so it definitely took some work uh to get through it but i also leaned on how the the preseason went how well i was doing um at the first several races so to come back uh i feel like i, I don't really have unfinished business i've i've done everything i've wanted to do pretty much in the sport and never thought, you know, a lot of people know my story, but I never thought I'd qualify for a super gross man, let alone win one. Uh, so I, I just feel like I want to go out really on my terms and hopefully not crashing on the track and having a solid season and having my family a part of it's the main thing. And um, having such a good platform with this Honda 450 is, um, is great and makes it fun to, to do the work and, and, and be at the races. So uh, in, in summary, yeah, it was really difficult, but I'm excited to be here. And, and uh, it took me a few months to really make the decision. And here we are. Well, it's good that you came back, Justin. Um, hopefully your final season, yeah, you're able to make all the, the memories you hope so and start play off of where you started last year and end this on the, the note that you want to. Cool. Appreciate it. Uh, Justin Schooler. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, Justin Schuler with Kicking the Tires. Uh, Brayton, uh, obviously your final year, uh, you've had uh, some good success, like you said before. You know, you didn't even know you'd qualify for a main event and let alone win one. But take us back to that win in 2018, just for memory's sake, uh, and then maybe talk about a race that you felt like got away, because that was uh, one historic Daytona win for sure. Yeah, it, it was definitely a a crazy night. And, and you know, a lot of races like that, you look back on the week previous and you like want to try and replicate that and what did I do different to make me win that night honestly nothing I was sick all week 
I, I don't really enjoy the Daytona track that much. I never really have. So to go win it was just something super special. And to be, to be riding that well that night, it wasn't like I just lucked into it. Obviously, Eli had some issues, but uh, my lap times and everything all day were right on pace. So an amazing night that I'll, I'll cherish forever. Uh, ones that got away. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of them were Villapoto would just get me right at the end. There were so many in 2012 that I uh, could have and maybe should have won. There was that race in Phoenix in 2014 uh, that Villapoto got me right at the end and, and we had a good little battle. Um, so yeah, there's several races, but you know, in that time, that was just, it's nice to get podiums and, and, um, you have to finally get that race win in Daytona is, is something I'll cherish forever. And if I didn't get that one, I would definitely be thinking about the ones that, that got away a lot more. So to even have one is pretty special. Uh, Steve Mathis. Uh, first of all, Daniel, it's disrespectful to leave Brayton and Troll to the very end. So I don't, I don't think we're happy about that. No, it's fine. We're getting um, maximum time with them. I think it's a great move. Can we stay here for another half hour with these two? That's true. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Best for last. Um, Steve, I'm JB. glad you dressed up for the occasion. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank the you. Entire. Um, JB, can you say without a doubt, this is your last year of Monster Energy Supercross? Like if you have a great year and the Moto Concepts guys, Smart Top guys are willing and you're willing uh, or 100% this is it. Yeah, this is it for sure. This is it to full-time racing. It's hard to say. I mean, it's really hard to say those words, but yeah, it, it's my last uh, full-time, you know, preparing all off season and doing all 17 races. Now, you know, I can't say that I might come back for a few. There is one thing that I have been thinking about is if I do all 17 this year, I'll be like six away from 200 starts. So yeah, maybe I pick six the following year, but uh, for sure, it's my last full full time season, and and um, I, I just think it's it's time. I know we've talked about this privately and and with several other people, but uh, it's I just want it to end on a good note, right? I don't want it to end bad, and and most things end because they go badly, and I don't want it to go bad and then have to end, you know. So um, I'm on a great team, great motorcycle, still feel like I compete at the highest level. I, I can compete at the highest level, and um, to go out on with, with a bang and maybe uh, a couple podiums would be awesome. Soak it in, Weege. Soak it in. Celebrating. All right, last question, and then uh, we'll let him go. I've got some closing things I'll go over right after, but uh, Michael Antonovich, last question. Well, thank you, Daniel. Brayton, I've been watching these, you know, Anaheim 1 replays that – Feld has put on YouTube, which by the way is awesome. It's really gotten me excited for this next few weeks, but you've been in so many of these races from 2010, 2012 to now. What is it about this current crop of riders that makes them so competitive? Is there some trait that everybody has that other people didn't have? And then what has been the biggest change you've seen over the course of your career? Uh, I think there's a couple things that have changed. I really believe that everybody's equipment is really on a level playing field now. I think if you rewind to 2010 or even 2012, I think we all knew that, you know, certain teams lacked or certain riders we knew, even on factory teams that didn't have the correct training program. Now everybody's on a great motorcycle. Everybody trains super hard. There's really no secrets in the training world anymore where then there still kind of was a little bit on, I wonder what this guy's doing or that guy's doing. So I just always think then there was, you had your A guy and a B guy on the factory teams. Now a lot of teams are two A guys and both of them are past champions or both of them are title favorites. And so I just think it continues to get deeper and deeper. And then also you have guys like myself that, that stick around longer. You know, we, uh, Steve was joking with Dean about being 30. Uh, there's a lot of guys in their late twenties and early thirties right now where then there wasn't, there was, you know, you were at your peak early twenties and, and mid twenties. And then we've seen, Obviously, RV and, and Dunge and those guys that exit early when they're 26 or 27. So um, I think between those few things, it, it's just more competitive. It just is. It's, um, it's you know, we always say deep field and, and this and that. But I remember the days when I could go down on the first turn and still get a top 10. Those days are few and far between now. So uh, that, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. 
Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Justin. See you guys on Friday. Safe travels this week. Thank you. Uh, last couple of things before we go. The Monster Energy Rig Riot is back for the 2022 season, uh, doing exhibitions at 12 events this year. Uh, the BMX Triple Crown Challenge, the Freestyle Motocross guys are back, Unknown Riders are back. Um, and for the first time at Supercross, the Quarter Pipe Triple Crown uh, will be at some of the races this year. So keep an eye out for the dates on that. That's the Quarter Pipe Triple Crown, new for 2022. Uh, select markets will have Monster Energy sampling. Um, Kawasaki will have a KLX 300 SM motorcycle demo ride. Uh, Fly Racing will have a pump track for the younger fans. So if you're bringing the kids out uh, for the fan fest, it'll be something for the whole family. Um, the new video game, Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game five is coming out March 17th. And there will be demos at the races during the fan fest. So fans can come and try out the game before the release on March 17th. Uh, Mike's Harder will be sampling for those over 21 years old in the Fan Fest. Uh, Spin Master will be on hand with play tables for authentic replicas uh, with authentic replica Supercross bikes. So another thing to check out in the Fan Fest. And then the Fly Racing Radio Show uh, will be at the races this year, immediately following the last 450 qualifier. So catch the Fly Racing Radio Show uh, right after qualifying. Um, St. Jude Children's Hospital, uh, Research Hospital is back for 2022, a great relationship that continues to grow. Um, this shirt saves lives, uh, the text to donate campaign. We're going to launch that at Anaheim 2, that's January 29th. Uh, this race saves lives is the race dedicated to St. Jude Children's Hospital uh, with the graphics from, um, yeah, you know, the graphics, the gear and all the creative things we do for this race saves lives. Uh, that's going to be Atlanta, April 16th. And then the Supercross St. Jude online auction will start at the last, will go through the last three races of the season. So keep an eye out for those dates. Again, this shirt saves lives, January 29th, Anaheim 2. This race saves lives, April 16th for Atlanta. And then the online auction running through the last three races of the season. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in today. It's great to hear from the riders and great to connect with our media and get ready for a great season. Um, Daniel Blair, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you Saturday, Anaheim 1, and kick off another great season of Supercross. Thank you.